Welcome to the second episode of Movie Dumpster. Today we're talking Peter Jackson's Bad Taste from 1987. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Welcome to the Dumpster. Now, what are you, Duty Who, is doing on my planet? I fucking love this movie. I can't believe I put I put off this movie for so many years. And I, my only knowledge of it was the one picture of Peter Jackson with a spoon eating out of the guy's head. And just like the cover art and that's it. I'm like, this looks weird. We were like one of the first people uh, that we knew to get internet. Like uh, back in what? 95? 96? Some shit like that. And my video store didn't have bad taste. But I would like look up like old horror movies and bad movies on the net and bad taste came up and meet the feebles and dead alive and i couldn't get my hands on these flicks so then fast forward to when i moved an easy video down the street had bad taste and i rented that and after that it just totally blew me away like it really got me into being like i'm gonna do my own effects and i'm gonna start doing some some filmmaking well i, I caught dead alive because i borrowed a bunch of like recorded vhs's from a friend of mine actually it was um uh shit Tommy. Um, Tommy DeMichael. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what happened to Tommy? What happened to Tommy DeMichael? I have no idea. I'm sure if I hit up Dave, he'll tell me. Uh, and, like, he just had the director's cut of Dead Alive ripped from somewhere. I don't know where. Um, they just had it, and I barred it, watched it, um, watched it at a friend's house. I had two people get up and leave the room. <laughs> I don't blame them, because that shit, that, up until that point, I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's a pretty, it's a pretty nutty movie. They walked out right when um, Lionel's pulling the dog skin out of his mother's mouth. Your mother <laughs> ate my dog! Not all of it. Um, so I got a similar vibe uh, to this movie immediately. One, because it features a bunch of uh, hideous, kind of dopey townies, uh, and lots of cheap lovable synthesizer scores oh yeah but spoiler there are really aliens that are our fast food junkies killing people to eat them at some point i stopped paying attention to the plot i was just looking for nonsense <laughs> <laughs> i mean at one point it like just dissolves because it's like oh it does it's just like it's lots of like it's just lots of gunfire and then they blow up a fucking house and the gratuitous act of violence against a sheep which we'll get to yes <laughs> All right, so the movie opens with... This movie's disgusting, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. It's wonderful. It's Gross. It's fantastic, though. It's disgusting, but it's, like, cheesy enough that, like, I was, like, I could sit through the whole thing, no problem. But there's definitely a couple scenes where I was like, okay, if that effect looks just, like, a little bit better, I may have been one of those people that left the room. Well, the levity that I think they add to all the violence and shit really... Uh, really puts the movie at like a, a, a spot where it's super enjoyable. Well, there's a there's a surprising amount of pratfalls in this movie. No. <laughs> All right, let's dig right in. So, the movie opens with the head of this top secret organization and he's listening to this recorded message that he got from this town called Kaihara. I didn't even bother. I read that street sign, I was like, "Nah." <laughs> so, we're in Kaihara. And, um, and of course, the guy, uh, you know, running the tapes has to have some weird quirk where, you know, he has a hook for a hand, but and not any kind of hook, a finger hook. Holy shit. I completely forgot about this entire sequence because it's never brought up again. <laughs> Yo, you think exactly. Charlie from Charlie's Angels had a fucking hook hand? Is that why we never saw him? Maybe Dr. Claw has an extra finger hand thing. Next time, gadget. Oh, I got this finger that I smoke my cigarette with. This, yeah, this is like this dude is this dude's seen once. He's smoking a joint from that finger attachment, by the way. It is totally a joint. It's a roly oly o man. He's got this long boy. He's fucking toking up. He's like, guess we gotta kill some aliens. Oh, okay, and the the joke name for this uh, paramilitary group is a joke that would not fly today. <laughs> Yeah, AIDS, which yeah, stands AIDS. for Astro Investigation and Defense Service. You know, he really, probably really worked that one out over a night. Oh yeah, and we got we get a lot of fun acronyms in this movie. Well, the, the thing that cracks me up next is, you know, he says, "Oh, we got to get the professionals in," and it cuts to some guy just like looks like he stepped out of like a '70s porno with a gun, just chasing down somebody. Everyone in this movie looks like it's like it's like you're my main characters, and you are just the lousiest bunch of idiots I've ever seen. It's like everyone has bad hair; they just look like like 
they just, I don't know, got home from their, like, super small towny job. Everyone looks like villagers. It's also fucking New Zealand, so... Yeah, but we're talking super low budget. Like, Peter Jackson shot this in over four years over a bunch of weekends. And uh, he paid most of it out of his pocket. And then the New Zealand Film Commission paid the rest of it. You know, he was taking friends and, and just random people and putting them in the movie just to get it done. So, I mean, he plays two parts he himself plays two parts in the himself, movie. Yeah. Which I've never seen Peter Jackson without his beard. And it took until someone said, like, yeah, he's Derek. I'm like, who the fuck is Derek? And then I hit the IMDb page, and I was like, oh, my God, look at him. Yeah, that guy. The sadist voyeur. So uh, the 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 head uh, special investigations guy doesn't want the Army. He doesn't want the Air Force. He doesn't want the military. He wants the boys. Yeah, he wants Derek, Frank, Ozzy, and Barry to take care of business. Oh, yeah, because they're the best, man. So he, so he phones them up. And then we go right to uh, Kai Hara. Where you see the leader of Sum 41 going after uh, Barry with an axe. <laughs> I love this entire sequence because he has, he has no urgency about a guy coming up with an axe. He's like, stop it! Stop it now! <laughs> right there! Cut it out, man! Yeah, he backs up about half a mile while this guy's coming at him, like, slower than a zombie. And he just finally says, well, I guess I gotta kill him. I was laughing because we just did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen for Phantom Zone. And the opening of that movie has a constable standing in front of a German World War One tank going, Stop! I command you to stop! And then he just gets run over because he's an idiot. It's like a Michael, it's like a fucking Austin Powers gag. And it's it's same shit here where he's just, just I'm like, that man's got a, not even like a hatchet. He has a wood cutting axe. Defend yourself. <laughs> so Barry whips out his magnum and blows this fucking guy's head off in the first uh, act of violence of the whole movie, which is a great opening way to open the movie. Yep, with some really disgusting, really gross practical gore, which is I like mean, looks like it looks like discarded animal guts. Oh yeah, like I mean we're we're blowing half this guy's head off. And it, like, falls down onto his pants and just, like, slides down it. I don't know what the gore is made of, but it's got texture and sound that really made me just, like, <laughs> I, think, I, I think they might have used real brains. They might have. I don't know. It's disgusting looking, whatever it is. And then you have, you know, after he blows this guy's head off, you know, you find out that he's, you know, he's kind of getting his intel from Derek up on the hill. And then what happens next? I guess he's, he kind of goes into the town and er, n everyone's missing. There's no one in the whole town except for a bunch of people wearing blue uh, jeans and denim shirts, and he just starts running because clearly he's afraid of Canadian tuxedos. <laughs> it's a bunch of... Yeah, I was about to say a bunch of doing Canadian tuxes. <laughs> oh, no, maple syrup rustlers. Yeah, and of course he's got hey. this this entire empty town, but he, he decides to give his report to the other guy standing right up to the back of uh, a wall where he's clearly going to be grabbed from, and, you know, the rest is history. They also... they. Fuck that shit up with that guy's head. Oh, my God, dude. He's getting driven through every which way from Sunday. Like, he's put through the wall, the door. Yeah, they, they're taking David Crosby, and they're smashing him against this fucking door. They're using him as a battering ram, which is hilarious. He's in two different sheds. The first shed he gets pulled into, and the shit kicked out of him, Barry. And then uh, he, he gets away from him. And then the second time he's in a shed, he, like, tries to, like, lock him out. Oh, no, he tries to kill that guy with the pitchfork. Yeah, but he gets his, his jacket. But his caught. jacket gets hung up on something. I kind of like that, actually. I thought yeah. that was a pretty good way for him to, like, reveal himself and put himself back in danger. I mean, in the long run, it didn't really matter. He kind of gets out of that unscathed. Well, yeah. But I, I actually kind of like that. And the only reason he gets away from these guys is because Derek is up on this cliffside, and he already has one of the alien or the sup sup purported aliens tied up by the foot hanging off the side of the cliff upside down so he tells barry to just like get out of there and he goes to interrogate the alien hanging off the cliff i i, I want to just interject real quick though for people that haven't seen this movie just picture peter jackson as connor said without the beard uh you know a little skinnier than he has been seen in his past and just throw a big old pair of uh, circular glasses and a and a red and yellow scarf he, he basically looks like harry potter and some and some fake teeth yeah, oh, he's he is, he's very, his features were very, that's why I couldn't tell it was him, his features are all exaggerated. And he also has, like, gray in his hair, so, I mean, they actually did, he actually did a pretty good job differentiating himself in each of the characters that he plays. So he goes over to himself, which is the, the other alien, whose name is Robert. Who has the full beard, who has the, the full denim beard, vest. The black hair, the, the Canadian tuxedo. Yeah. And he takes his big ass bayonet and he s sticks it in his boot and he starts hammering this fucking bayonet into his foot to get him to talk. I guess it's like some kind of Kiwi foot torture he's doing to him. I like how he had that in like his lunch bag. 
He just oh has. God, he pulls his hand. His hand oh, sandwich no, this dude, and his knife. This dude is armed to the teeth. But he's got this. <laughs> he's got this little blue backpack that obviously can't fit all of this stuff in it. So it's kind of you know it's the gag. So he nails the bayonet into his foot, and this thing starts screaming off the cliff face. And it's like sending out like a distress call to the rest of the guys that are uh, attacking Barry. You know, they come running up, and then as you just you know hinted at there, Connor, he pulls something else out of his bag. He pulls a fucking Uzi out of his bag. <laughs> With, with enough ammo to take out an entire town. And he's getting off on this. He's loving this fucking Uzi, man. Yeah, and he has that line. What does he say? Uh, you know, he's like, oh, Derek, uh, Barry's on the, you know, on, oh, the, yeah. on the line with, um, with you know, I, I guess it's kind of like a walkie-talkie system, but the, yeah. the rig that Derek has set up, I don't know what they were trying to do with that. It's like all duct taped and everything. Well, he's a, he's a quote-unquote scient- the scientist of the group, okay. of the AIDS group. So they're trying, I guess, I, I guess I see where they're going, but he's like, Derek, he's like, you need to get out of there. And he's like, He's like, I can't do that. My name's Derek, and Derek's don't run. And then he pulls the Uzi out, and he starts just shooting everything. Um, it reminded me of Predator. Yeah, I don't kinda. know if that's what he was going for. I don't know if that Predator came before or after this movie. Oh, when he's just like shooting into the yeah, trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just think Peter Jackson's a maniac. So this ragtag bunch of farmer-looking aliens come, and they all have different hammers that they had grabbed. One's got like a giant mallet. Oh, this was got- like I was cracking up at this because I was like, this is like the baseball fury scene. But they all get ready and they <laughs> grab their fucking baseballs, like <laughs> they baseball bats. Like I'm like, all it's missing is a '70s swag music. So they so they run up on him, start shooting at these guys, but he runs out of bullets, and he he just turns around and points the gun at him and goes. Eh! Which I thought was pretty good, because then he goes back to his bag, and he, he grabs another clip, and he's trying to fix that guy out, and he just smokes him. Oh, yeah, that's where the guy runs up too close to him, and then he, like, he shoots me a few times, and then stabs him with the Uzi, and then just keeps pumping rounds into him. Oh, man, I love... That part was pretty fucking awesome. He fucking <laughs> blows a hole in his chest, and then sticks the gun through it, and then wastes, like, two other fucking aliens that are coming up the cliffside. It's the most innovative human shield I've ever seen. So he throws his dead alien off and pulls his gun out, reloads, and there's, there's the last two aliens of the group coming after him, and they both have um, sledgehammers. Dude, the way that this scene is directed is so fun... And it's so good, like, for this low-budget movie. The, the cuts in this and, and just, just the choreography, I think, is, like, really sets it apart from, like, other low-budget stuff. Um, like, like when, they, when he jumps over the fence and, and they go to swing at him and one gets hooked up on the fence and it, and it uh, almost hits him in the face. And then he sits up and the other one comes to swing and, it, like, and he ducks out of the way and then that sledgehammer hits the other sledgehammer. I that thought that was pretty over. good. The only it's, thing like, I lots did... of, like, weird Three Stooges comedy but with graphic violence. Yeah, and yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It totally yeah, yeah, works. Yeah. Like, he, he shoots the one guy, and then his arm, like, falls off while he's, like, mid-swing, and then the arm falls, the sledgehammer's still attached into the next guy's head. Plants itself right in the fucking melon <laughs> of the guy behind him, and just bl- <laughs> and just brains start fucking coming out. More of that gross, whatever the fuck they're using. Yeah, what is it? It almost looked like a combination of, like, corn syrup and ketchup with a little bit of jello. It I don't looks know. like he went to the local deli and was like, give me what you got, what are you not using? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I mean. Like, well, they shot it on a farm, so there's probably there. I'm 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 almost positive they're using animal parts for some of this shit. Um. So you know, he's he 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 takes out the aliens, and then he's he's he realizes, okay, the one got away that he had tied up, and then out of the bushes comes Robert. So then you have a little Peter Jackson on Peter action action, and he totally fucking eats it. Oh, yeah, Robert kicks Derek off the fucking cliff. Yeah, I had to ask you if this was real or not, because I guess the way they, like, they pose this dummy looks like a real fucking dude just getting dropped on his head five times. Well, as silly as this movie is, like, he's pretty on point with how he's constructing his special effects. So if you if you notice, like, Robert's in the same, I'm not, excuse me, not Robert, Derek's in the same position. So when he, so when fucking Robert kicks him in the stomach and he flies off the cliff, it's that static pose, but the dummy actually starts uh moving pretty realistically as it falls down the cliff yeah it like it's it's like it's it's he's like going he's like tucked in this position and he's just getting like every single bump on this mountain hill slash thing is like head and shoulders bam head and shoulders bam head and shoulders bam and i'm like is that a real guy (laughs) (laughs) and then he flips down off this cliff and fucking smashes down with an explosion of fucking blood (laughs) yeah i was convinced he was dead and that was the end of Derek, purportedly. So from there, uh, Barry is running up the trail to get to Derek, and Robert is running down the the path in front of him. He, like, super jumps over him, and then Barry takes a shot at him and misses. Meanwhile, yeah, uh, you have the other two guys kind of showing up. You know, the, Well, not yet. Yeah, they, they're on their way. They're Well, they're, they're like, five miles away. Well, either way, I just wanted to point this out that oh, yeah. 
you know, first the, the one character, Ozzy, he's got a Tales from the Crypt shirt on. And, uh, you know, later in the movie, you see him, like, with a red tank top on. So I guess there's no consistency to see there. But I found it interesting how uh, the whole time they're driving, they have, like, this really bad heavy metal music on. And the one character goes, oh, this is, like, heavy. He goes, oh, this is, like, elevator music for headbangers. Oh, it's like, it's it's the most, like, it sounds like affordable metal is what it sounds like to me or, like, whatever the fuck it is. Barry's talking to them while Joe said they're, like, five miles out. And he's like, oh, you know, Derek, he didn't make it. They killed him. And then uh, what was the joke? Oh, you know. What's he going to do? Who's going to take care of his aviary? Uh... Oh, his aviary. He's yeah. Like, oh, you know, the only thing he can relate to is birds. And then they, they they cut back, and there's just birds pecking at his corpse. <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed that. But right, No, yeah, but right before that, we see, we're introduced to Giles, the guy who's like a collector for bread, which is the beneficial relief. What is it? Beneficial relief and emergency aid division. Another bad pun. He's like a charity worker or something. Yeah, yeah, he's like a yeah. he's like a charity collector, and he, he you know he's going to take money from people. So he shows up in Kaihara, Kaihara. Sorry, I gotta say it like that. I don't think you have a choice. Uh, the Kiwi's rubbing off on me, dude. So he goes into Kaihara, and uh, he starts to knock on the doors, and realizes you know like nobody's around. Um, and he sees fucking Robert sitting in the bushes eating the brains of the guy who got his head shot off in the beginning. With a spoon. <laughs> like it's a fucking bowl of ice cream. It's so good. So then he freaks out and starts running, and then and then Robert gives chase. Uh, and he gets into his car. Well, no, hold on. He he, he said he... Oh, excuse me. He, he makes that judgment that he's got enough time to make to do his car without Robert catching him that he has the time to stop and give him the middle finger. He, like, he like does, like, a fucking up yours fuck you combo. And it has a sound effect and everything. <laughs> and then, or some if, shit like know, that. You know, of course, then he trips almost moment, you know, immediately he, afterwards. Yeah, he, like, slips on a rock and busts his fucking face. But anyway, yeah, he gets in the car. And he jumps in the car and Robert comes after him and, like, he's having a hard time, like, putting the window up and starting the car and Robert sticks the fucking bayonet through the window and almost like cuts his face off and then he rolls it up and gets the car started and now we have this guy driving down this road and Peter Jackson's like stuck in the fucking window yeah and then oh well whoops I forgot I had the emergency oh, brake yeah, on emergency and then he guns on. it but he drives to the alien base that we don't know is the alien base yet. right it's like a what would you call it almost like just like a it's a huge fucking beautiful house in the country. Yeah. yeah it's almost like a mansion. It's wonderful. Like, I, I want to live there. So from there, we meet up with Barry again, and Barry's like, oh, Frank and Ozzy, you know, they killed Derek, and we need to go find him. I think I see, I think I know where their base is, because the guy's running that way. And there's a there's a cool little uh, Doctor Who joke in there, too, because they're like, oh, it came down to an alien spaceship, and he's like, maybe it was a telephone booth. I missed that entirely. It's blank and you miss it. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Giles, he uh, he does like you said, he goes up to the uh, the alien house, and you know he's immediately captured. And they uh, they cut to a scene of him like you know in a big pot with all the the soup vegetables like, and everything in there, and, and like he has no clue. I was I felt like I was being transported to fucking go- uh, troll. Tin. It's like a yeah, sixty yeah, yeah. gallon drum. And he's got a fucking apple in his mouth, and he's sitting in a vat full of 13 different herbs and spices. Yeah, and, you, you know, you have the the main, I guess, even though they're all bad guys, you have, like, the main villain yeah, the big bad here. What's his name? Mr. Mr. Crum? Lord Crum. Yeah. And this fucking dude, uh, little fun fact, the actor who played Crum had recorded his dialogue, but couldn't finish it because the, the guy died before the production was over. Holy shit. Yeah, so they shot most of his scenes, and then uh, somebody came in and, and dubbed him over. Someone dubbed somebody over in this movie? No. You just. Yeah, I mean. Well, I, at least they're, most of them are doing their own lines. That's true. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you're interested in that character. Uh, uh, he's the only one that actually is wearing, like, a suit. Everyone else, you know, like we said, is wearing the Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> to but differentiate. There, but there's this little gag in here, no pun intended, where uh, Giles, he's in the uh, in the in the 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 what do you want to call it? The soup thing. Jay Giles. Yeah, Jay <laughs> Giles. Uh, the 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 fucking pot. He's yeah, in the yeah. pot. He's in, it's and, 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 and Robert's over there while uh, Lord Crumb's giving some ominous speech about how they're going to eat the guy. And he, he he takes a little rag and shines the apple in the guy's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> while he's being told he's going to be eaten alive. I found that funny. So Lord Clum's basically like, we're so close to victory and we can't fuck this up, so we got to keep it low. You know, we're going to eat you for lunch. And he's like, we're going to suck his fucking brains out. And also, I totally forgot this character we just missed, the big fat butcher guy. 
It, was that guy a human? What was his no, all, that he whole wasn't, thing? Was no, he just no, some man. fucked up weirdo? Yeah, imagine. Like, the he, aliens he, were like, he was just like, oh, we, we enlisted this serial killer. Well, I'm just saying because he's, like, the only one not dressed like the rest of them. So, like, what was his deal? Oh, you're hideous. What planet are you from? I'm from around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. from around the corner. I live here. <laughs> Eh, I kill people for a living. He's like fucking Mick from Wolf Creek. Apparently, he's the only one who can who can butcher a human good enough. Yeah, so they kept him alive. Yeah. Uh, he knows how to make a mean human steak. Mm, it's delicious. So then you cut back to the, you know, the professionals, um, and, you know, they're getting all ready to go to this mansion to hopefully, you know, figure out if that's where the alien stronghold is. And, you know, they're like, oh, we got to put on our uniforms. You know, we don't want anyone to see us. And the one guy goes, oh, do we have to hide our faces in case we kill any civilians? And the other guy goes, oh, we're only authorized to use violence when it affects planet Earth. Oh, and the moon. Yes, and, the moon. And the moon. It's like, okay. I, I mean, I get what they're totally going for here, but it's a little bit, uh, they're laying it on a little thick. Then they fucking gear up. So they're, so they're putting on, so they're putting on all their costumes, their, you know, their flak jackets and their ski masks and shit. And they're loading up these fucking submachine guns and all this shit. I was going to say the amount of weaponry they have in this movie, which I came to find out was all fake, which is pretty impressive. Cause I was convinced for just a minute. I was like, where did they get all this shit from? Again, man, Jackson's Jackson's pulling fucking pulling shit out of his ass. He's making all of this shit. So, so Ozzy's in the, in the, uh, in the trunk of the car and he's, and he's throwing Frank all, all the guns and stuff. And then he's going to take out this big ass wooden box and Barry, He's like, oh, I don't think we're going to need that, Oz. And he's like, ah, you fucking ruined all my goddamn fun. And he fucking puts it back. Uh, so foreshadowing. Well, hold on. Meanwhile, before they, they kind of go and put this mission into play and you find out, as we've kind of alluded to earlier, that Derek is alive. Um, you know, he falls down that hill and apparently a, a, a seagull. Saved by a seagull and it's not. Oh, my yeah. God, yes. Okay. <laughs> With the most gruesome, uh, you know, effect in the movie up to that point, probably, of this fucking seagull just spurting blood. He fucking sits up and there's like a seagull in his face and he fucking headbutts it. That's like a crystallization moment of this entire film. Like, yeah, this is pretty much what we're expecting. Yeah, exactly. But doesn't exactly. he love birds? Well, in his defense, in his defense, his brains are literally hanging out the back of his head. Yeah, but they broke, I guess they broke his fall. So it's okay because there's just a nest of seagulls and like eggs that are Busted just- Busted eggs and a fucking smashed ass seagull. It's just a bloody mess of shit. And, and I love how he has like this, like almost like it's uh you know, he's got the hole in his neck, and it kind of like peels up and down, like oh, in his head, like, yeah. like something like you did, like, like a sweater or something that you would get, like a Velcro sweater. It looks like a little mouth on the back of his head. Yeah, yeah. It's he, a it's a literal flap in his skull. Oh, exactly. Yeah. With like br with full brain exposure, and then when he picked up that piece, I just the way it was shaped, I'm like, is that one of his balls? I thought the exact <laughs> same thing. <laughs> like his testicle came out of his fucking yeah. head. No, it, I thought it, it no, did look like that. I thought he's, he like just landed and fucking fired a testicle out of his ball sack or something. I don't know. <laughs> it would probably fall in line with what I've seen in this movie so far. If he shot it out of his ass, I feel like it would be way farther away. It's like right next to him. But then yeah, he just picks his piece of brain back up and just puts it back into his own head. Like it, it like yeah, it just goes anywhere. It doesn't matter. He opens his little flap and he's like, oh, "I'm not feeling too good. I got to put this brain back in there." <laughs> and then his medical his his medical solution is to just basically wear a hat. He puts on a hat that he gets from his car that yeah. that has uh, cardboard cutouts of the Beatles. What the? Okay, that was like I turned I turned around and came back and there was I'm like, am I in a different movie? These Sergeant Pepper's cutouts are the fucking best thing, and they're they're sitting in like a they're sitting in the driver's seat, and then it's like a double decker bus where like the 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 pedals and the fucking uh, steering wheel like go really far down. So at the top is your, is the seat where like you would drive the van. It's it's really cool. Yeah, well it's like he's standing and driving. But it's also like a bug. It's like, sorta. Yeah. It's this tiny ass little car. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny as shit. The visual was fantastic. So then the uh, you know they break into the uh, the mansion. They're all in their Cobra Kai outfits, <laughs> and uh, they're all in there. I call it their toolbox murders uniforms. Oh, nice. That's a there pretty good go. one. Uh, they get in there. You know they get up in the kitchen. And there's just blood all over the floor. So, you know, uh, Barry grabs the mop. He's like, oh, someone's going to break their neck in here. Yeah. And then one of the aliens walks in with, like, a bowl. And they pull the Sub-Zero fatality on him and rip the head off. <laughs> and the first thought is Barry there with the mop almost immediately as the friggin' head's being literally removed from the body. He's already in there to clean it up. He's like, oh, I'll just mop this. And then fucking Ozzy, like, rips the spinal cord off the neck and fucking boots the head out the window. <laughs> The old magic's still there. He's like, the old magic's yeah. still there. Like, I love that line, dude. <laughs> it's so good. 
I think this is when the movie, I think this is when any semblance of plot just fucking falls out. I think we're in this mansion for what feels like forever. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like they were really trying to, like, get into the plot, but it kind of, like, okay, you get a lot more information about the aliens, but as far as, like, everything else, it just kind of, like, doesn't go anywhere. Well, that's all you really need. Like, we've already established who AIDS is that's and true. what they're doing here and all that shit, and we don't know why the aliens are here yet exactly. So right here is where you get the alien plot dump, and then after that, it's just a fucking, you know, 100% pure, where's the beef, anarchy, fucking shootout, bloodbath. So Frank uh, puts the shirt on of the guy that they ripped the head off yeah, of. Yeah, the, the bloody shirt that none of the aliens comment on. They don't they're give just, a fuck, man. Oh, I guess he just had an accident. I don't know. Well, they figure, I guess, because, like, you know, uh, they're, they're cutting up humans. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? Or like killing other people, so they're like, ah, whatever, there's blood on them. That's more of a reason than I would have given them. <laughs> they don't give a fuck, which is weird because, like, you can totally see, like, the flak jacket and, like, the costume underneath that the shirt. That was an extremely <laughs> tight shirt on that man. All the extra padding. So he takes the bowl. Yep, this one's where I tapped out for a minute. Oh, man. So he takes the bowl and he walks out, and we hear Crumb giving his uh, plot dump speech. And he's basically like, Oh, uh, the Crumb's Crunchy Delights will be put back on the intergalactic fast food map because we're, we found a new menu item, which is humans. And he's like, ah, there's four billion of them here waiting for the taking. And he's oh, like, we're uh, gonna fucking, we're gonna, we're gonna fucking eat those humans. He's like, oh, yeah. he goes, oh, I, I can't believe we fit a whole town into 20 cardboard boxes. And then I'm thinking like, and he, oh, he's like, yeah, after you slice off the fat. And I'm like, dude. Like, that's the, one of the tastiest parts of a fucking burger, man. Like, Yeah, that's, like, people look at me weird when I start eating, like, the fatty part of a steak. I'm like, that's your, that's, you're missing out. That's a flavor jam right there. See, exactly. And he's like, oh, we're gonna have some sapien burgers and homo nuggets, and they're gonna be better than fucking, what is it? He says, he's like, he's like, oh, uh, you know, you know, Balthazar's moon rat, or whatever the fuck that is. Yeah. Some some competitor like like space fast food competitor. So he's McDonald's and their Burger King. Is yeah, that what pretty he's much. Trying to say? And now he's bringing the fucking you know the the, the triple Mac to. Uh, okay. I <laughs> or the, uh, sign the me king, up. The King Mac. What the fuck is it called? I don't know, but I'm eating it. It's got like it's got like six fucking patties on it. Some Jesus disgusting Christ. Thing. Maybe I'm not eating yeah. it then. That sounds a little bit more. <laughs> I'm, I ate one and it was delicious, and then I felt like shit right after. I cut it. I I call it the Baconator, and that's like as All far right. as I'll you know, go. I ate a Baconator, and I thought I was gonna fucking die after. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I got to try. Like, it was one of those times where, like, you know, you're just like, oh, man, I really I really want some shitty fast food. And I'm like, oh, the Baconator, like, I never had that before. And then you order it, and then you fucking eat it, and you want to, like, kill yourself right after you eat it. It should just be called the Gut Buster because, like, an hour later, you're just, like, you're doubled over. You're like, why did I do this to myself? You're, mm. you're on that toilet for a solid two. So, well, not a solid two, but solid two hours, but it's definitely not a solid two. No, it's not. <laughs> so. <laughs> ah, poop jokes. So, back to this movie. So, uh. You know, Frank has this bowl, and he's walking around with it. He's not really sure what's going to happen with it. And uh, Robert, who was up there by Lord Crumb originally, comes down the stairs, and a bunch of the aliens kind of grab him by the ankles, and he starts, like, kind of gagging. Yeah, he, like, he, like crowd surfs into these bunch of fucking aliens. Yeah, well, Frank's holding this fucking bowl. Like, like, ah, the, the gruel's almost ready. Yeah, and, and he comes up, they bring him up to the bowl, and he just fucking barfs. Nope. Like, <laughs> nope. He, he nope. barfs the Nickelodeon green slime into this bowl. No, oh, it's so I good. can do so much. I work in a, the veterinary field, so I see things that people should will never be able to unsee. I can't do vomit, especially human vomit. I can't do human vomit. I also worked at a movie theater, and I've seen kids literally vomit up what had to be three gallons of just purple goo. That's fucking disgusting. It is horrible. <laughs> but did you have to take a sip of it? Uh, no. You had to drink some check? Yes, yeah, this is where I was like, I almost got up and left the room. I was like, <laughs> So they're passing this fucking bowl of fucking bantha milk around. <laughs> Frank is Frank is uh is tr moving slowly down the line of people trying to get away from this situation. Meanwhile, Lord Crumb takes a big fucking hearty gulp of it. Uh, he gets a nice little chunky bit in there. Yeah. Ah, an exquisite bouquet, Robert. Granted, luckily they made it look like like it looked like ice cream. Yeah, it, it, it's all fucking blue and had like looked like like sprinkles in it and shit. I'm like, at least it doesn't look like real vomit. Uh, it, it looks like carrot. Like it looks like they killed the lady from Fifth Element and then just like <laughs> drained her into a bowl and put like this is what blended Smurfs look like. Oh, yummy! So uh, Frank takes the bowl and he takes a sip and he's like, oh my god, this is disgusting. And then he takes a sip and then he like licks his lips and he's like, wow, this is fucking delicious. And he tries to go take another sip and then like the other aliens take it away from him. 
and everybody's burping and shit, and that's hilarious. Which, which, meanwhile, Ozzy's watching this whole thing, like from the door with like a fucking like shit eating grin on his face <laughs> that this guy, that his friend and you know his coworkers got to eat this, stuff. and he's loving it. He's like, oh my god, this fucking guy's got to drink this puke. That's fucking gross. So Frank's all done, and he finds out the plan of the aliens, and he goes back into the to the back room, and he tells uh, Barry and Ozzy. So the first plan of action is to get Giles, which I think is like when they when they found the house, they were like, oh fuck, that guy's in there. We need to go save him. I think so, yeah. And I mean, that's why they're kind of like right. operating secretly before they before they go in, rather than just go light him up because right. they're trying to save this guy. So they find him. He's in sixty gallon drum in the kitchen. Don't they like knock it over? Yeah, and they, dump him, they dump him yeah, out. They dump him out onto the floor, and he's like a fucking naked pig with a with an apple in his mouth. They cut him free. He gets dressed, and I guess they like kept this guy's clothes because they're like right next to the fucking thing, which is kind of weird. Because if they're gonna eat him, what is, are they gonna just dress themselves with it, or I guess they're they gonna use it for a kindling? I mean, it doesn't match the dress code anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, it totally goes against their their blue shirt, blue jeans policy. Yeah. I mean, there's... you got the chef. Maybe they have another guy they're looking to bring on that needs a uniform. What, like like an evangelist? Like, he's wearing this fucking awful, like, ch- like plaid fucking suit with, the, like, a, with like, a yellow button-up collar. Uh, listen, I don't have an answer to that question, no. but you never know. They're mm. aliens. I don't have an answer to anybody's fashion sense. <laughs> yeah, <movie>. yeah. <laughs> uh, cheap. We... <laughs> We found it in a in a shed. What, what kind of budget are you looking at? Thrift store. So from there, we go... Uh, we have Lord Crumb wish everyone a good night like the Waltons. Oh, he's like, good night, John boy. Good night, Tom Tom. Good night, Billy. And then they cut to uh, the very next scene is, is morning, which kind of threw me for a loop, but I guess it is what it is. Yeah, well, I guess they're like hanging out there all night, right? Like you were saying? Yeah, like, what are they doing all that? They're all dressed in black. Why aren't they going room to room and just gunning these guys down? Or not only... The, oh, yeah, like in their sleep, like slit in yeah. their throats, like real quiet. <laughs> I'm gonna bleed you real quiet, but they I mean, don't I guess even, that then there's no movie. So. They don't even do that though. Like you think that okay, everybody's going to bed and get the fucking civilian out of there. Get out of here. Go well, get in your car and get the true. fuck out of Dodge. Well, they left, and we wouldn't have the next thirty minutes of gun action and explosions. Well, exactly. Not necessarily. Like they're protecting Giles, but like they could have let Giles just like go and be like, get out of here and leave. I guess there's people on patrol though, maybe outside. I don't know. So day comes. So day comes in five minutes. And Derek, we go back to him briefly. He is now, you know, on his way to the location. And then uh, you cut back to the mansion and they, you know, they're ready to, to start their operation. And they kind of, you get a, you get a bigger breath of how big this location is at this point. Cause the previous times it was shown, they didn't really kind of go into it. And they have like uh, this whole courtyard. There's like a balcony, uh, there's a whole lot of shit going on in this alien fucking mansion thing. And, uh, you know, they're kind of going through the house, kind of like checking room for room. And then for some odd reason, these aliens enjoy playing patty cake. I'm not <laughs> totally sure where they learned that from, but in space, that's a thing. I mean, these dudes are simple as shit. They're, they're a bunch of, like, low, like, they're higher life forms because they can, like, get to Earth. But they're lower life forms in terms of intelligence? Oh, yeah. Right. They rank lower than, like, the prawn from District yeah, 9, who are just a bunch of, like, angry savages. Right. Yeah, but, like, they fucking built technology that got them through the cosmos. <laughs> well, but and they're you, fucking, like, downtrodden. Right, like, I don't get it. You also have to think, too, like, they have the ability to, to shape shift. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, they also, I mean, this is more so like what I saw like in the credits and doing a little research afterwards. But there's like one line in the movie uh, towards the end where Lord Crumb refers to the, the, the them as labor, you know, units. They're their third rate aliens or yeah. something along those lines. So they're just there's clearly like some kind of pecking order in there at the bottom. So I'm not really that surprised. Oh, so they are like the prawn. Yeah, 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 literally. Right, so I guess the patty cake thing is kind of just show how simple they are, but I just found it incredibly weird. I mean, that's been this whole film so far. Well, yeah, I guess if that's the weirdest thing in the movie, I guess I watched the wrong one. So they're like, okay, we got to get the fuck out of here. So uh, they go upstairs and like kind of like check out everybody. Right. And then they're on the stairwell, and one of the aliens is kind of like doing his patrol. And then somehow, who may be a class two because he's a little, uh, he he knows what's going on. He fucking hears the dudes on the stairs, and he's like, "Oh shit, I'm gonna blow this fucker away when I turn around." Well, he Take, pull- starts taking out a gun. Yeah, he thinks he's like Clint Eastwood with the way he's to going for that. Right. And uh, you know, it takes just a little too long, and gets blown away, and then all hell breaks loose. Yeah, they fucking blow this dude away, and then it's no holes barred. They're fucking kicking down doors, shooting the shit out of aliens. And then there's a one, there's this one scene where that dude's wearing the bowling cap. He looks like fucking, he looks like Grandpa Alex the Large, and he's like drinking a scotch, and he has like a handgun, and they fucking, uh, 
they walk into this room and I guess they don't notice him at first but he notices them and he goes to shoot him and fucking Ozzy turns around with the magnum and blows a fucking hole right in his head and he like falls to the ground and like his his the blood starts like trickling out of his head into his glass it's pretty fun mm. this is when we got the awesome uh back body drop over the barricade right off the balcony <laughs> yup well we have to go outside first and there's the fucking shenanigans in the front yard where like Frank's, like, doing, you know, Twinkle Toes Fred Flintstone across the yard, and there's, like, squibs going off. Okay, this entire, like, the end of this sequence basically had me rolling. When he's, like, dodging gunfire, and then he, like, sprays into the tree a little bit, and then one guy falls down, and then eight more guys fall out one at a time. I was like, this is the most hot shot bullshit I've ever seen. I love it. They, they go back to uh, Derek, who's kind of like almost there, and he's kind of looking around, and he sees all these gunshots going off, and one fucking comes out of nowhere and knocks the hat off his head. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he hits and the ground fucking, and starts bugging out. He, and his fucking flap opens again and starts talking to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, right. at this point, like, Derek has basically just gone insane from the fact that his head is basically just, you know, getting some air. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about a hole in the head. <laughs> yeah. He's just, um, he, he, there's just repeated gags where he's like, his head opens back up and he's cramming other shit into it. And like, yeah, and oh, I, yeah. I like this one. He, he fucking pulls his belt off, and which is probably what he should have done in the first place, you know, all things considered. And then he just like, he's looking for the brain matter that fell out. And it's just a big fucking wad of like big league chew, like on the bottom of his <laughs> shoe. You know what he reminded me of? He reminded me of what's his face from Dead Alive? The, 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 the skeevy, yeah. what is it, the stepdad or what the fuck is he? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Um, the uncle? The I can't remember what his name is. No, like, yeah, the guy in Dead Alive who gets hit in the balls, like, 15 times, who also, like, him and Derek have a th- similar thing where it's, like, they're kind of weird characters who suffer egregious bodily harm who also have one of the coolest scenes in the film. <laughs> well, Derek, he, you know, he ties this belt to his head, and he gets back in his Sergeant Pepper mobile, and he starts mm-hmm. cruising through the fucking woods towards this mansion, and there's just a guy, like... For no odd reason, well, he's an just alien. The, out there, an alien yeah. with a fucking fisherman's cap Well, I think on. he's on patrol. I, mean, yeah. I think it's safe to say I mean, he's on patrol. And, and also, I guess, you know, to eat my own words, there is also a massive gunfight going on in the, on the property. Right. But, anywho, Derek takes this fucking Beatles mobile and fucking runs the guy over, and the second he impacts him, <laughs> the guy gets... It was 20 years ago today! Kersplat! Blitz in half. The guy gets bisected yeah. and is being dragged <laughs> by his intestines. And then, uh, you know, Derek gets out of the car in a huff. You know, like you said, Connor, he's kind of like gone over the edge a little nutty at this point due to the whole brain injury. Oh, he's fucking shot, And he, he goes in the back of his truck and he pulls out his fucking chainsaw and you think he's going to finish the guy off who's now like, you know, just his top half of his body is still like kind of moving around. And he, he starts marching towards him with the chainsaw and the guy fucking launches a uh, a pine cone at him, hits him right in the that, forehead. I was chuckling so hard because like if I'm looking around me, I'm like, oh, pine cone's going to piss somebody off. But I love how he, he can't just do anything. Ah, oh, come here, I'll bite your legs up. You know, yeah. it's like one of those. He, he gets hit by this pine cone and I guess that was enough to, to, to deter him to not cut this guy down. And he just fucking and marches off and then the guy fucking swings another one at him and he, he's just like ah yeah <laughs> hey man he's got more important things to do he's got to take out fucking lord crumb yeah 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 so then uh you know you cut back to the action and uh you know shit's just going down and uh you know you have a bunch of characters kind of in different locations we shift gears a little bit and we finally see what these aliens look like um lord crumb starts fucking bugging out on the ground and becomes his true self and then all the other aliens follow suit and they and they you know turn into themselves which they're not supposed to do because they they're supposed to keep a low profile but at this point fuck it we're at an all-out war here we need to we need to fucking kill these earthlings and then get the fuck out of they here. all like they look like bipedal uh quados from fucking total recall like they all look like the big fucking mutated baby <laughs> <laughs> so all that happens and then and then uh you know there's more there's a lot more uh gunplay and killing uh, we kill Robert finally. Is it Ozzy or Frank who kills him? I don't remember. I think it's Frank, or, or it might be Ozzy, and he fucking wings the 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 uh, the bayonet at him, and it goes right through his throat and fucking. Oh, Robert! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. And kills him. Yeah, after this whole movie, where basically like everything they've tried to do to take this guy out hasn't worked, just like one little flick of the wrist, and the guy's done. Well, it's this fucking <laughs> it's a fucking sharp object through the throat, man. Yeah, I mean that'll well, this do you. Tr- this is true. A little dab will do you. <laughs> so. uh... 
So we're running through the house. We're killing fucking aliens. Crumb gets into his little cockpit area of the house and starts revving up the engines on this fucking, on this house that's actually a spaceship. And these fucking flaps open up on the sides and we're, we're, we're rolling in the fucking astroturf. This is where I was basically like, okay, how did he pay for this shit? Because the rest of the movie looked low budget as like all hell. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm like, this fucking house is moving. (laughs) <laughs> I think this was the extra money that he got from the New Zealand Film Commission. Well, meanwhile, and- right before that, though, let's not forget they have a little bit of a chase scene where uh, Ozzy gets the fucking RPG out of the oh, back yeah. of Frank's okay. car and, uh, you know, in the process blows up Frank's car who has two aliens in it and Frank, who's like a mile out, says, Oh, my God! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Like, how does he even know? I mean, he sees an explosion. I'll give him that much. But how does he not just know that the fucking RPG was shot? But anyway, so, yeah, they get back to the house. The Astro Turf's being pulled in. Yeah. Ozzy gets shot in the leg. Yeah, so he, he so he's now he's a casualty of war. Well, sort of. Well, he's not dead, though, because, yeah. you know, he has the, the house, you know, crumbs, like, kind of bringing everything together. And he's on this fucking Astro Turf trying to crawl off of it. Right. And then you have the whole scene where... Derek finally shows up. And starts fucking shit up. Yeah, he's got the chainsaw. <laughs> he cuts a fucking silhouette of himself into the wall. Even and fucking though the, kicks through it. Yeah, it's even so though there's good. a door about two feet away from him. So then, you know, and they fucking fire another RPG. And it goes through the hole in the wall that Derek created and hits a fucking sheep and just blows well, it first into smithereens. It, like, Crumb is in the window and it like he like ducks out of the way and it like flies through the window then it flies through the fucking hole that Derek cut, and then it flies out the other window of the side of the house, and then it hits a fucking sheep, and it just explodes. It's it's the most gratuitously random thing in the entire film. Like, they're just like, oh, random sheep, boom, and it blows up into this, like, horrifying just burst of wool and blood. It's like the last thing I expected. Yeah, and I, and I mean, if anyone's confused about the order of events, I apologize, but there's some pretty fucking crazy shit happening in this part that's like hard to even process as we talk exactly. about it. Exactly. Well, uh, real quick, the, that there, actually there is a reason why the sheep gets blown up, and it was cut from the film, but like apparently there was a bunch of like gags where a sheep, this particular sheep, was like fucking with Ozzy and Frank. <laughs> In, like, different situations. So I guess that was, like, the payoff at the end for those gags. Like, he kept... I kind of want to see that now. <laughs> well, now I want to see it, too. I think it's on I think it's on the DVD, like, the special edition that Anchor Bay put out, but I'm not sure. That that would make me, like, when I saw it, this one, I was like, oh, that poor sheep. But if I saw it with all that in there, I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Well, I lent you the DVD, and I, I watched the VHS of this, which okay. was 90 minutes, and you had the 91-minute cut. So was it just probably more gore, I would imagine, Yeah, right? but, like, it, it was uncut to begin with. Which was weird. Yeah, I right had about a, I that. had an uncut VHS um, because this film was cut to like 88 minutes or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to the, 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 the AstroTurf being pulled in. The yeah. house fucking, you know, crumb, you know, for some reason calls these guys wankers. Another, you know, out of left field thing. Uh, and he fucking lifts the ship off and he fucking leaves the planet. Yeah. So it doesn't blow up. The ship actually takes off. Now, the crew, all of which except for Derek have um evacuated or evacuated or got, you know, dead, you know they say they, they save ozzy and they and they all get back together and they watch this fucking spaceship fly off and they're like fuck you know we, we didn't stop we stopped them but we didn't stop them indefinitely so this they, really is like district nine yeah, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> pretty pretty much holy shit it kind of is <laughs> here you want to you get your mind fucking blown peter jackson was a producer on district nine yeah that's <laughs> whoa yeah, I, I think i actually knew that so the ship flies off, and so they rejoice, and they're like, "Oh, you know, they'll be back or whatever." Uh, so the so the ship flies off the house, and Crumb's up there, and he and he calls the home world, and he's like, "He's like, oh, I, we got the meat, but some fucking bastards killed a bunch of our men, and blah 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 blah." Yeah, and he calls he calls back to his home world on a rotary phone. Yeah, on a fucking rotary, phone, which is genius. It's like you know, there's there's no like high tech shit. It's just a fucking house that yeah, flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. Well, I like how his like his his like ignition device was just like a window mm-hmm. like lever mm-hmm. it's all it was <laughs> just kept just cranking that the shit. fact that it was a house yeah, in the long exactly. run like he might as well have just been mrs piggle wiggle at that point <laughs> <laughs> so so he's flying through space and he calls home and everything's fucking cool and he thinks he's sitting pretty he got away he's got the human meat he'll be back for for, for more right so then fucking derek takes his chainsaw and cuts a fucking hole in the ceiling and falls through 
and sticks this fucking chainsaw through the top of Crumb's fucking head. And this is so confusing because you don't actually see the <laughs> chainsaw go through his head. You're just like, it's he falls and then like there's some guts in the ground and then it just cuts to like Derek's legs sticking out of where Crumb's head should be. And then his head and then his head pops out of his butt. And he goes, I'm born again. And he's like, born again. So he goes through Crumb and like totally decimates his insides. They all shit out of his ass along with Derek. And then Derek takes Crumb's skin and like puts it on and he calls calls the homeworld like like the aliens homeworld up again he's like oh i'm coming for you you bastards and he hangs up and throws the fucking crumb skin on his face and heads off to the planet cut it re- it also again the dead alive it reminded me of the end of dead alive when uh his mother absorbs him into her belly and then she fucking blasts out of it. it i think it's like a callback to his own movie because i'm pretty sure there's a yeah. scene like that oh yeah there's even a scene like that in meet the feebles i don't want to spoil it for you so i'm not going to say what it is yeah i have not seen that yet i don't think sean has seen it either i've seen it you've seen me the- have we watched it yeah i've seen it like five times oh okay well there you go there's your answer you know, i'm not an expert on it by any means <laughs> at that, but there's, that a, point, there's but... also another scene where we're going through uh a body so that's uh that that's bad taste the whole time i was watching this movie i was like this guy made the lord of the rings trilogy he has made Oscar films. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, too, on that deluxe edition of the DVD, I guess it must have come out after he had made Lord of the Rings, the one I borrowed from Joe, and it says at the top of it, from the director of Lord of the Rings, and I was like, okay. Well, that's I, how they marketed the DVD. It's just like the weird, the weird mainstream acceptance of Peter Jackson knowing he made this kind of like just fucking schlocky splatter shit. <laughs> Which is like really cool when you think about it, though. It is really awesome because see, it, like it, it, like horror directors can they can kind of ascend past the genre because a lot of them get stuck. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. Like at the beginning, like that's why Peter Jackson is such an inspiration because of these films. I mean, because he made these fucking films before he made Lord of the Rings and like Frighteners and 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 all that. And in even like uh, um, James Gunn, like he was doing trauma shit. And then all of a sudden, now he's directing fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I was renting trauma films from A to Z video uh, when I was little and trying to grab them from Suncoast when I could. And that's probably, that, that's another reason why I wanted to bring it up earlier. But like these these films in particular were hard for me to get a hold of because not everybody had them. Uh, like, you know, back before the days of DVD, um, you had to, you know, watch VHS tapes. And uh, if they didn't have them, you know, that was it. You couldn't fucking stream the shit on Amazon video, you know? So, yeah, so... So what do you guys think? Uh, is this shit fresh, or are we throwing it in the dumpster? Oh no! This wow. Well, here's the thing. For us, this is easily digestible. This is this is kind of the thing we're looking for, and it's been a long time since I've sat down and watched like a really just old, low budget splatterfest horror movie. Uh, and like like as people like us and people who kind of share that taste can gobble it up no problem. Uh, but as I mentioned before, this is not for everybody. As I mentioned about the Dead Alive thing, I had a friend walk out during Dead Alive, and I'm sure I know people who would walk out during this. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I don't know, um, you know, just comparing to Rawhead Rex, because it's the, you know, the only other one we've done so far, like, I sit here thinking, like, I don't know, like, which one of those films I could almost recommend. Like, I'd almost be more inclined to, to recommend Bad Taste, just due to the absurdity of it, but at the same time, like, my mind wants to tell me that, no, this movie's fucking crazy. You might as well just show them Rawhead Rex at that point. I would recommend it as someone based on a novelty value. Like, what's this? This is Peter Jackson's first feature-length film. You know that guy who made all those movies you like that, you know, came out a few years ago? Here you go. See where he came from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that maybe that is kind of where my mind is, though, if you put it that way. It's good for film nerds, but I don't think it's good for anybody who's kind of got a casual approach to gore or horror or any kind of absurdity, really. It is the birth of one of the best filmmakers of our generation. Yes. And what he did in this film, I mean, yeah, is it is it hokey and it's funny and it's goofy and it's full of fucking uh, blood and gore. But like when you dissect what he actually did, he built all of the camera rigs, the dollies, the cranes, the steady cams. He did all the effects. He sculpted it. He uh you know, he baked the, the, the foam, he painted it, he, he applied all of these effects, he, he rigged up um, uh, basic uh, animatronic cable control shit. I mean, like, he is one of my fucking idols. This guy did it all on a, a small budget. Like, he, he fucking crushed, and this was his first film. So, this is a total... I, I, would, I would totally uh, advise someone to check this out, only for the sheer fact of what you can do 
when you really put your mind to something yeah, and you believe in and you believe in what you're doing. It's also good to watch. I think it's good to watch. To, I think it's good to watch to see like what happens when you kind of get absorbed by the big movie making machine that is like Hollywood. Because there's, I don't think there's a chance in the world that we would ever see a Peter Jackson movie like this, or like Dead Alive, or really like The Frighteners, because that I think that director is dead. He's been kind of a, like I said, he's been absorbed by the Academy. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, although like that makes me think like you look at like Sam Raimi, you know he did all those Evil Dead movies, but then he did Spider Man, and then like he came back with uh, Drag Me to Hell, which was great. I like. So Drag I would be. Oh, I love Drag Me to Hell. So I agree with what you're saying, Connor. But now that he kind of did the whole Lord of the Rings, Hobbit, King Kong. I, I wouldn't be that surprised if now he went and did do something like maybe not as gore heavy as his early movies like this, but I also at the same time wouldn't be shocked if he did a horror movie in that vein. Well, he's also if that, done if like that makes any sense. He, just like Christopher Nolan, he's done Warner Brothers enough favor, not Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers, Universal, Universal. He's done Universal enough favors to like walk up to him and say like, "Hey, I want to make this kind of movie." They should just tell him, "Yeah, whatever. Here's the money." Because that's what no one did. No one, no one can walk up to anybody at Warner Brothers and be like, "Hey, I made you three gajillion uh, dollars on fucking Batman. Let me make this movie about World War II. Yeah, which I'm excited for. But uh, oh, I can't wait for Dunkirk. It's gonna be great. Uh, I, I, I'm just gonna say, like you, you know, you asked if you would say this is fresh or throw it in the dumpster, and you know, I think it is still a dumpster movie. I mean, that is kind of the point of the show. But I would think about it this way: like, I think it lives in the dumpster, but I think it's like at the top of the dumpster like it's on it, the top of the pile where like it's like a burger that's on the top of the pile that like oh i could pick that up it's still got the wrapper on it i'm gonna yeah, eat it it's like george cassandra with the with the eclair yeah there you go perfect that was the perfect analogy the movie has no pretenses about what it's trying to be silly silly shit and that's exactly why it should be enjoyed as just that oh yeah but yeah man like if he went back and and went back to 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 roots and like i mean this guy he also founded fucking weta you know what i mean yeah like go back it like if he just did like a fun pet project out of pocket something like this and like shot it on like a 16 millimeter i think that would be really fun and i and he's and by god he's got the means to do it and if you look like look at like wes craven who tried to go back and kind of do like post new nightmare anything wes craven really tried to do that was like from his hand was kind of shit it's pretty much all shit <laughs> <laughs> my soul to take is one of the worst theater experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I think at some point I just broke down and started laughing. What what was it? Uh, no, it was the end when what's his face drops the line of it's not okay for people to kill other people. I was like, someone wrote that. Someone wrote that and put it in a paper and said, this is good. It, it is toasted shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terrible. If I'm remembering correctly, he did a film called Venom, which was like a voodoo thing where like there was like a truck driver mechanic who like gets resurrected via voodoo like pumpkin head almost and comes back and like kills a bunch of teenagers uh, in the bio uh, candy man you're thinking of <laughs> no you have to like say that in a mirror three times and turn around wait so if you say wait if you say venom three times in a mirror what toe for grace comes and gets you yeah and he's like oh i gotcha look i'm eddie brock <laughs> he's like hey peter i just took your girl <laughs> actually it's tom hardy now i am a skinny wimp oh hello i'm venom and i'm gonna kill you i can't wait to see what kind of silly voice he has for venom it's probably gonna be some bad american accent but i thought venom was pretty good and we should probably do it on the show because it's one of those it's one of those like i think it's like early 2000 like late 90s films that we should totally go explore that just got fucking swept right under the rug at the box office oh there's a lot of those i want to go revisit because i, oh, I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about i can fi i can picture the poster in my head i've never glanced at anything beyond that though i've seen it once there's like snakes and shit um so yeah we should check it out the poster for some reason reminds me of primeval and i don't know why it's uh, I can't even remember what it looks like. <laughs> okay, that's it. That wraps up episode two of Movie Dumpster. If you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Follow us at Movie Dumpster on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also check out our sister podcast, The Phantom Zone, hosted by our very own Connor McGraw. You can find them at phantomzonepodcast.wordpress.com. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor McGraw. Thanks for visiting The Dumpster. Suck my spinning steel, shithead! Ah!